Uh, hello. Uh, uh, today is uh, the birthday of Helmut Jan, and uh, by the way of it, uh, we'll uh, we'll talk about him and his works. So let's read a little bit about Helmut Jan. Uh, Helmut Jan, uh, born uh, January the fourth, like today. Today is January fourth, but in 1940 and died on May eighth, 2021, uh, 21, while he was riding a bicycle riding a bicycle, was a German-American architect known for projects such as the Sony Center on the Potsdamer Platz in Berlin, Germany, the Messeturm in Frankfurt, Germany, the Thompson Center in Chicago, One Liberty Place in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, formerly the tallest building in Philadelphia, and this airport in Bangkok, Thailand, among others. He built a lot. His recent projects included 50 West Street, a residential tower in New York City in 2016, and the Group Test Tower in Rotville, uh, Rotville, Germany in 2017. So um, let's, uh, let's look at the man. Uh, what he says here is, uh, is, uh, is uh, rather common, but, but he's right. He says, I strive for an architecture from which nothing can be taken away. Um, this is true in many arts, in all of them, actually. You try to create a totality that is organically uh, constituted. And of course, you cannot, sub no, cannot subtract anything, just as you cannot subtract anything, like in the case of anything that nature makes. No, I mean, a human body, you, you cannot remove uh, a limb or a, an arm or anything. Uh, this was the man. I mean, he looks like a playboy. He looks arrogant and cocky and very, very elegant. But I read that he actually, you know, this kind of man, you would say, is a ladies' man. You know, he's uh, a seducer. He probably has had 10 wives and, uh, you know, 100 girlfriends. Well, the truth is, he was married to the same lady all his life and uh, I actually admire him for this. So this might be just a, you know, a pose, a posing, you know, for, for the media. But he was, he was cocky and, uh, and his architecture is too. A talented German architect who left Germany for the United States and very soon after he arrived in the United States, he tried to complete his studies at the Illinois Institute of Technology but I don't think he did. Then he entered the firm of Murphy uh, Architects and uh, soon he became a partner. And then the firm became Murphy and Jan. And uh, when Murphy died, uh, Helmut Jan became the, the single boss. So this is what he says. The architecture profession has lost a lot of its integrity, especially in the U United States of America. The general architect here has no scruples, no ambitions. And now, it's strange how he combines scruples with ambitions, because usually those with ambitions have no scruples. But, you know, um, it's kind of strange the way he puts it. You know, it is as if, if, you, if you don't have scruples, you don't have ambitions. And if you don't have ambitions, you don't have scruples. But from what I know, contemplating life as it is, often those without scruples are exactly the ambitious ones. Anyway, it's uh, just a personal um, you know, uh, uh, comment. This is the man, or this was the man in his uh, older age, uh, but he still looks like an, an interesting man. Unfortunately, as I said, he died while riding his bicycle at 81. Now, again, you know, <laughs> we are dealing with a star architect up, up, and up again, instead of and away, up, up, and up again. He was uh, moving upwards with great speed. And um, besides that strange shadow on his uh, head here on the right uh, everything looks uh, just uh, you know alarmingly seductive i wonder what this is on his head though maybe it's just uh, you know the the graphics of this magazine uh, gq kk i don't know q i guess 
Anyway, drawings, drawings by, um, by Helmut Jan. He drew incessantly and with that tenacity Germans are known for. But the drawings do have some artistry somehow, you know, I mean, they are agglomerated as they are. You look at the drawings and you realize that uh, this is a man who's, who has a lot in his mind. This, by the way, is the Sony Center here. And as I said, uh, we became friends here with uh, on this uh, Zoom uh, site, on this platform with the engineer who engineered this work, Bruce Denzinger, a uh, North American engineer, quite a good uh, engineer. Okay, drawings by Helmut Jan, drawings and drawings again. Uh, he, he was very active at a time when postmodernism was also very active and, and postmodernism had a little bit of influence on him. And I would say that influence was not always great, but this was the fatality that postmodernism brought upon us. But the man, despite the fact that he was running, running a big company and had big commissions, he still found time for doing a lot of manual drawings, as you can see. And this is good, I think, you know, that, that you know, it, it doesn't matter, you know, the day has only 24 hours and it doesn't matter how many buildings you build and it doesn't matter you know, all the other responsibilities you have, you still make time to draw. And this is good. I know architects who are much less busy than Helmut Jan was and, and they don't draw any longer. Now, you know, drawings are subjective and their perception, uh, the evaluation is also uh, subjective. So, you know, it depends. You might like this kind of drawings or you might not like them. Helmut Jan, drawings, an exhibition in 1999. How many architects, uh, you know, in our country have exhibitions with their drawings? Not too many, although they are much less busy than Helmut Jan. Anyway, moving forward. Um, now this is maybe Maybe some, some I say his most important work or certainly one of the most important works by Helmut Jan. Unfortunately, it was almost destined for being demolished, but uh, the community of architects um, in the United States and overseas and all over the world protested because it is an, it was, a, and it is an important building. And I think now Google, the famed, uh, company will move in yet into another building because they 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 have plenty of buildings but i think i think uh, google uh, was astute enough to understand that a prestigious building could help its activities so this is the building of course the one in the center the outside is, it is as it is but it's interesting the the, the big atrium the big inner space the vertical uh, space quite ample that is inside and you see it here and you see the 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 similarity between the almost ad literam between the spirit of his drawings and the spirit of the building and not just the spirit even the, the you know the the way they look the way th this is the built work but it, it, somehow it almost looks like his drawings I had been inside of this building. I, I, I took the elevator here and I had vertigo. I, I was uh, very weak at that time and going through my midlife crisis. And I, I felt very, very um, overwhelmed somehow. And, and yes, weak. Uh, maybe I was afraid of height or um, ample open spaces, but I, I still admire this building because it has this public dimension, kind of like the big atriums of, the, of uh, John Portman. But here is a different feeling because you see a lot of color, a lot of fragmentation. You see people everywhere. So, you know, it's, 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 it's a different kind of architecture, although the atrium is, is somehow to an extent similar. 
it's quite big as you can see i mean it's not as tall as the you know the the womb uh, the architectural womb of john portman's hotels but it's still tall i mean you can count the the floors so this is the thompson center in chicago where google the google company will move uh, very soon i understood it's a good building i think and uh, he was the author helmut jan Uh, looking at this picture, you might even say this is not a rendering. No, it is not a rendering. It is a picture of the built work. Somehow I find it more interesting inside than outside. The, uh, the outside is a little bit too monolithic and, um, you know, it, it doesn't really announce you for what is inside, but it's still, a, you know, a rather unusual silhouette within the, the urban fa fabric of Chicago. Now, of course, it's a building dedicated to shopping you know indeed you know we shop in we are because we shop shopping is as uh, rem Kolha has said is the uh, the terminal of all human activity uh, if we don't shop we don't exist that's why barbara gruger uh, with her sarcasm was correct i shop therefore i am would buy the cart with his, I think, therefore I am. No, today is I shop, therefore I am. And if I don't shop, I don't exist. Because this is the, the, the goal, the very engine of capitalism, you know, production and consumption. Uh, we reduce life to it. it it's some kind of a planetary madness shopping 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 and we try to solve our neurosis collective neurosis and individual neurosis through shopping because it's an illusion it gives you the illusion that you are accomplished that uh, you know you 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 are in the close proximity of the gods because you bought another useless gadget or like me another uh, almost useless book because i have too many and i cannot read them of course uh, all of them and I uh, just surround them with, with me with them and uh, at one moment they suffocate me because there are so many and they are so heavy it's about shopping it's a vice it's a vice and you feel empty and then you try to fill that emptiness with um, with something you know with going quickly to the mall very quickly <laughs> But look at how all those people at the bottom, you know, it's, it's the power of the people, you know, we the people, a building for the year 2000s. I, I guess they had a premonition that the building might, uh, might be the target of a possible demolition, but it was safe and I'm happy it was safe. Now the Sony Center in Berlin, uh, the buildings in themselves don't attract me very much, but this, um, you know, plaza, this square of an elliptical uh, form with this, um, you know, umbrella above it is uh, the spectacular part of this work. And as I said, uh, Bruce Denziger was the structural engineer for this work, and he expressed some unhappiness about how this was solved here. I didn't quite understand the intricacies. I, I only look at it with the eyes and, uh, you know, I, 
I probably feel that something maybe could have been done a little bit better, but uh, how exactly that would have been, I don't know. But it was because this was not a circle. It's not even an ellipse. I mean, a rigorously generated ellipse. You will see the shape. So this was, uh, you know, quite a quite a piece of engineering and also quite a piece of of, of architecture too. I guess uh, Bruce Denzinger was uh, skeptical about uh, you know how how this part of this structure is solved, and uh, because of the irregular irregularity of this. Uh, a fluid curve um, you see what is here at the bottom is also a little bit um, you know unsettling so to speak or off this is in the in, in where the Potsdamer Platz is in in Berlin and so an important uh, investment of Berlin in you know for uh, to announce the future so to speak we see you know all kinds of buildings built by some by famous architects like Renzo Piano or Sir Richard Rogers or even Arata Isozaki. But this was built by Helmut Jan, who returned to his country you now with his uh, this work because it is um, he was German. The Sony Center in Berlin. But I, I think he did all these buildings around that. Uh, We'll see the, the we'll see the site plan soon. And just like in the case of the Thompson Center, here in the Sony Center, the most interesting part is in inside. Well, this is still an outside because it's not it's not literally and completely uh, an enclosed space, but it's still some kind of a covered courtyard. And it is spectacular at night and even during the day, it is spectacular. So if you arrive in Berlin, please do pay a visit because uh, there are many interesting buildings in, in, in that area. Potsdamer Platz. Uh, by the way, of, of, uh, of the engineer who worked here, a very interesting man, very cultured, very loving and knowing of art, of culture in general. Amazingly passionate about architecture, much more than most architects I ever met. Incredible. He's in Los Angeles and he participated in many in many of our encounters here on Zoom and he even made a presentation himself. So if you want to watch it, to see it, you can go to the YouTube channel, look for Bruce Danziger, and you can watch it. He invited about 50 engineers from all over the world, his friends and acquaintances, uh, a few architects, one of them a famous Mexican architect, Enrique Norton. Uh, he worked with some very important architects, and even here he worked with Helmut, Helmut Jan. They did together this thing, you know, and you see it now from here that it's not, it's not quite anything, you know, it's, 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 it's difficult even to draw it, forget about building it, but they built it. Very often Bruce Denziger participates here, you know, how he finds time because at the 8 a.m. Los Angeles time, because uh, it's a difference of, uh, you know, uh, many hours between Los Angeles and Bucharest. Also, I have to say, because look at this, this is not even vertical, I think. So, I mean, there are complexities here that of an indelible nature. Uh, but Bruce Denziger is also very interested in the ornamental structure or the ornamental aspects or the, the aesthetical aspects of structure. This is, this is art. Engineering becoming art. That's what it is. So you see here, uh, you know, uh, in, in plan, it's... Um, 
or maybe I was wrong, maybe it's a clear ellipse, but an ellipse, even when it is so-called clear, is still a kind of a puzzlement because it's based on two circles, you know, so it has two centers. And um, I don't know if it's a so-called uh, regular ellipse, it might be. Uh, again, you could ask why, why did they complicate themselves? Because obviously it was a complication, but how could you do art without complications? So-called complications. Now, a building in Germany, in Frankfurt, the Messe Turm or Trade Fair Tower is a 63 stories, uh, story 257 meters skyscraper in the West, West End Sud district of Frankfurt am Main in Germany. It is the second tallest building in Frankfurt, the second tallest building in Germany, and the second tallest building in the European Union. Wow. It was the tallest building in Europe from its completion in 1991 until 1997, when it was super, 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 super surpassed by the Commerzbank Tower, which is also located in, in Frankfurt. So this is the building, unfortunately, a little bit uh, touched by postmodernism, but tall it is, very much so. And... Uh, <laughs> You know, the surroundings are totally dwarfed by, by the, the phallic splendor of this, uh, of this tower. Personally, I dislike a little bit this postmodernism sensibility, maybe more than a little bit, but that's my, you know, subjectiveness perhaps. I don't know what's going on in that pyramid at the top, but I'm sure they, they found some usage for it. Frankfurt. Now, Liberty Place in Philadelphia, USA. USA, USA. A Liberty Place is a skyscraper complex in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, United States. The complex is composed of a 61 story 945 foot, 288 meters skyscraper called One Liberty Place, a 58 story, so there are two actually, a uh, skyscraper called Two Liberty Place, a two story shopping mall, of course, called the shops at Liberty Place. What liberty, what, what, what liberty would that be without shopping, right? You have to shop, otherwise you cannot call yourself uh, a, uh, you know, a free man. And the 14 story Westin, Westin Philadelphia Hotel. So what do we see here? You know, we see two office buildings, we see a mall and we see a hotel. Of course, these are the functions that uh, serve capitalists beautifully. The towers are not bad. I mean, you know, they are influenced by, uh, you know, Art Deco, uh, they, they, there are influences here, but uh, I think they are, you know, rather well crafted, um, even though maybe not very originally. Uh, and uh, what else can we say? You know, two towers, a uh, little bit different from each other, but just a little bit. You can tell they are made by the same architect or the same architectural firm. Philadelphia. A city which is not uh, extravagant in its aspirations and its realizations, but uh, this uh, architect Helmut Jan, uh, you know, uh, tried to, to change a little bit some things, a little bit, but not too much, because of the clan day that these buildings uh, send towards um, a certain past. Big they are, not just tall. They are, they are big, you know, they are muscular, muscular buildings. 
well, we are in the United States. You remember the, the, the urban background or the urban fabric of Frankfurt. Nothing of the sort here. And Philadelphia, again, is not the most extravagant uh, city in the United States. Now, this airport in Thailand, uh, he also built in Chicago. I mean, this man uh, had very big commissions and um, he did a few airports. This is one of them in Thailand, uh, which probably functions uh, very, very well and architecturally is engaging, you know. Uh, but, but, you know, airports are huge investments. So it's possible to do sometimes a very extravagant things. I don't understand why the telephone is ringing now. Nobody is calling me ever, and they call me now. <laughs> Sorry about this. They just ruined the. They just ruined the, the the presentation, and I don't know how to turn it off. <laughs> Sorry about this. Really, I I I I am a victim of of the mobile phone. I I I I I don't know how to handle it. It's very intrusive. The mobile phone is immensely intrusive. You know, I even developed uh, nervous uh, gestures when a certain uh, tick or something, you know, is, is in the middle of the night. Uh, uh, I really hate tele mobile phones and you cannot live without tele mobile phones. You don't exist. First, you need to shop and second, you have to have a mobile phone. If you don't have a mobile phone, you don't exist today. You receive SMS all the time. If you don't have a mobile phone, where are you going to receive the SMS? I really hate mobile phones. And I hate the addiction of people to mobile phones. Everybody, did you notice that all the human beings in the present are only, they are one armed beings? They only have one arm and one hand. They don't have any longer two like God made us. They only have one because in the second one, they have the mobile phone, like the icon of God or of Mary or some, you know, it's like an icon. Everybody works with a phone in the hand. Why? Sorry, but really it exasperates me. I, I forgot, usually I, I, I go and hide it in the kitchen, but today I forgot. <laughs> anyway, back to the Thailand uh, airport. I, I drew in my presentation. I, I, I cannot, uh, I cannot display it on YouTube like this with a ridiculous outburst against a poor, innocent little mobile phone. Ah. <laughs> but as you can see, a beautiful airport. What can we say? What else can we say? It functions properly. It is beautiful. It is long. It is wide lots of items to buy there tax-free and um, you know happily run towards a plane which takes you to some exotic island where <laughs> with 1000 people on the beach 1000 mobile phones will all ring incessantly and you don't know which one rang and so when one rings 1000 people jump from the um, chairs <laughs> because they think their phone rang. It's just madness, really. This, uh, this business with the mobile phones is, is total madness. And there is another madness, of course, Facebook. I, I, I witnessed uh, there was an interview with one of the founders, not Mr. Sugar Mountain, uh, Zucker, Zucker uh, whatever. Uh, he, 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 he said we, we intended that people become addicted to Facebook and they got it. That's exactly what they wanted. And that's exactly what they got. This addiction, I do not understand. It's the most frivolous ever in the world. And everybody's addicted to Facebook. I even thought of, of launching something called the Facebook, to the Facebook, to show on Facebook, to, shows, to show on it what Facebook rejects to show. You know what happened last year when I wanted to talk about Hiroshima and the disasters of war, I, I, I asked a friend because I don't use Facebook. I asked a friend 
to display for me on Facebook uh, the invitation to the talk here on Zoom and to display a picture with uh, with the deceased, with those people who were uh, the victims of, um, of the atomic bomb in Hiroshima. And his Facebook account was shut down because Facebook wrote to him, we do not display undecent pictures. Undecent pictures? Pictures of people who died, who were transformed to ashes by the atomic bomb, they are called undecent? The one who is undecent here is Facebook. To call a dead body undecent is unacceptable. I'm really revolted. But what can I do? The new Bangkok International Airport. It reminds me a little bit at a different scale altogether of something I saw published today uh, with the uh, classrooms designed and built by Zaha Hadid architects for um, refugees, for the children of refugees. And I like very much the idea to, to, to have a, you know, a star architect or a firm so you know, famous, dedicate talent and work and hours and so on to serve those in need. I think this is very nice. Also, I think it's very nice. The classes, aesthetically, of course, the scale is much smaller. It's not dissimilar from what to look at here. Uh, it was published on the zine. You can, you can see it yourself. Anyway, uh, of course, uh, on airports, all kinds of mechanisms are at work in order to, you know, entertain the tourists and so on. And we are in Thailand here. Helmut Jan, again. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's a little bit deterministic when you look here. You know, this Cardon de Cumanus is quite strong and long, very, very long. But because of this fragmentation and the curvatures um, uh, used, uh, it's probably not uh, unbearable. The length of it, two tunnels in both directions. Helmut Jan, Bangkok, Thailand. Now, this might be the last work I show now about uh, this German architect uh, who became an American architect. Or maybe I shouldn't say so. Maybe he remained a German architect living and working in, in the United States. 50 West Street, New York City is a, is a tall building in Manhattan. And here it is. You know, is this one? Of course, there are other uh, tall buildings, but this is by Helmut Jan. I don't find it particularly, you know, unique or uh, interesting, but it probably works. And uh, tall it is, indeed. And glass it uses, indeed. And the invoices, the you know the the bills for the electrical energy and maybe not only electrical are huge. But who cares? Those who buy apartments in, in such a tower have no problem to pay thousands of dollars on uh, on the energy bills. I'm sure. Is it sustainable? Of course, it is not. But this was not a preoccupation at the time, and uh, maybe even now. Someone like him, Helmut Jan, wouldn't be very interested in sustainability, probably. Or he would try to solve it or its problems, try to solve them kind of like Sir Norman Foster does with a lot of technology. Because that's how it is. We think we can avoid uh, you know, the 
or reduce the climate change and avoid all the other problems deriving from it through using more and more technology. I don't know if it's just about technology. Maybe technology could help to an extent, but I think a change in consciousness is maybe even more necessary and to learn to live a little bit more modestly. But how could you live modestly in skyscrapers? Here in the background, you see the new World Trade Center that replaced the fallen uh, Twin Towers. And this was designed by SOM, David Child, um, the designer from SOM. Although the competition was won by um, uh, Daniel Lipskind. But this is the tower by, uh, by Helmut Jan. Glass, glass, and glass again. No window opens. It's really about air conditioning. And we know air conditioning pollutes, and we know air conditioning is expensive. But again, the tower by uh, Helmut Jan and um, the new World Trade Center. It seems the, the sunset light uh, likes only the building by uh, Helmut Jan. Well, it's because it has the re reflective glass. You know, it's um, you know uh, conducive to notice it in the sunset light much better than all the other buildings around, which have small windows and uh, you know. I used to take the, the boat from here, the ship, to go to uh, Staten Island uh, here. A, quite a romantic little trip. And you'll pass by uh, here on the right some ways, the, the Statue of Liberty and so on. Anyway, nostalgia. The time passes. So that was about it uh, today. Thank you.